but I'm feeling free already. We just begun. Hey, we've got some exciting things that are coming up. Zach Bigley, an evangelist, an amazing man. He has had some great, great um, uh, influence on young and the young adults. And so he's coming this Friday night at 7 p.m. And we want all the youth and all the young adults to be here. This man works in signs and wonders and prophecy. And um, we know him. And he is amazing, anointed man of God. And so we want our youth to catch on fire, right? The fire of God. He's bringing it. He's bringing the fire. So all we have to do is bring the youth. If you know somebody that is a young adult or a youth, make sure you give them a call, text them, invite them, because God is going to do something amazing this weekend. And don't you feel a little set up? Here we have all this prayer, all this fasting, and now God's going to touch our youth. Is that not awesome? That's totally awesome. And also, then he's going to take our Sunday morning service at 1030, and he's going to do it again because we don't want us, us, us old fogies to miss out. <laughs> I'm not talking about myself. Um, anyway, so let's, let's make the effort to invite people and really see what God has to do for us, what he's got in store, because I really feel in my heart it is something really amazing. And so we need everybody to get involved on this one. Well, how many people feel free? Are we ready, worship team? Are you free? Let's do it.
Jesus and others be within your presence. I speak Jesus. want to speak the name of Jesus to every thought that addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is Father
Ula ma 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 kula ni na masande da kusande. Come on, let's push in. Ula ma ni na masande da masande. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Use your faith right now. Hallelujah. God's giving you a measure of faith. Use it right now. Hallelujah. Ira ma 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 kula te. Shara ma ne na ma sante. Ula le ra ma sante ra ma shende ra ma shende. Hallelujah. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you'll do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly, the elders come and join me. Just quickly, just come and join me in faith. Quickly, just come in faith. Just the elders, just come in faith. And dear woman of God, we stand in faith with you tonight. Come and join me in faith. We only have faith. Nothing but faith right now. Hallelujah. 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 We stand together in faith. We believe in faith. Give me an usher. Give me an usher quickly. Only faith. Everybody can have an opinion. Everybody can have a little fake prayer, but we have faith. The Bible says, call forth the elders of the church. And it says this, pray the prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a couple things. We'll stay. First of all, you're not done. Number two, we need you. Number three, the best days of your life. We declare it right now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Shirley, pray faith. I speak life, more abundant life, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every sickness, every disease, have to go in Jesus name in Jesus name the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus cleanse her body from head to toe by the power of the blood of Jesus we overcome every sickness every disease everything that it shouldn't be in her body have to be flushed out by the blood of the lamb in Jesus name in Jesus name Jesus name I speak to all the cells to be alive more abundant life more abundant life life abundant the resurrection power of god flow through her right now right now jesus name church lift your hands everybody will have a battle that you don't have the strength to fight and even though you say you can you just don't have it i wanted to declare over the people of god tonight this battle is the Lord's hallelujah I just don't have the strength I don't have the energy I I've got up so many times off the ground and this is for everybody here lift your hands this battle is the Lord's hallelujah this one is yours God we just thank you this one I, I don't have the strength I don't have the energy I don't even have the time but this battle is the Lord's Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. You're here tonight and you're in a battle. It's the Lord's. Just give it to the Lord right now. So God just say, I give this to you. I give this to your power. I give this to your wonders. I give this to you in the name of Jesus. This this one, this one is the Lord's. Hallelujah. 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 And I, I, I want you to declare this right now. I said, I, I'm not alone. Come on, somebody. Just say, I say it. I'm not alone. The Lord is in this one. I, I'm not by myself, but the Lord himself is in this one. Hallelujah. 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 Church, you learned it. Just lift your voices and just begin to praise him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, la ma 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 ma. 
You're the wind that fills my sail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, mighty is the Lord. Let's push in a little bit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes to you. Oh, la, ma, 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 ku. Isha te ku sente. Oh, la, ma, 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 ma. Let me exhort everybody. True worshipers must worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. True worshipers. Well, pastor, if this deal would go through. No, true worshipers must worship. Just hear it. True. The true ones. Yeah, but I, 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 I got cancer. True worshipers must worship. Just hear it right now. Must. Must talking to a lady in the heat of the day with shame been married seven times and he said to her must she got a hold of that word true worshipers and the same girl that ruined homes was the one that brought the whole town to hear the gospel so you got a problem you must worship how many are hearing this revelation you must worship you got a situation you must worship I'll just say it in a soft way. You're probably not going to make it. Now, I'll tell you the truth. You won't make it if you don't worship. You'll be suffocated by your problem. It will absolutely crush you. It'll take your heart out of you. It'll take your faith out of you. True worshipers must worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just say tonight we're here to worship. We're here to lift up your name. We're here to glorify you. We're here to say that you're my God. Uh, you're my God in the good times and the bad times. You're God all the time. And the true worshipers are here in the house. Just the true ones. Just the true ones. Pastor David, softly sing this right now. No longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Now declare it I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Sing it with the worship team. Uh -huh. Yes, I am. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. 
Now sing in the spirit, church. Come on, hallelujah. Lift your voices. Come on, lift your voices. We lift the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. The name. Our fight, it's got, sometimes we don't read the word, it says our what? Fight. It's a fight. It's not against flesh and blood all the time. The battles are won in your praise, which stimulates your faith. And God moves in faith. It's his language. It's the language of God. That's how he talks. He didn't talk in doubt. He didn't talk in unbelief. He didn't talk in fear. He talks in faith. That's how God talks. That's his, that's his language. That's how he speaks to you. The words of life. He's the river of life. He's the bread of life. He's the giver of life. That's who he is. So he'll speak to you in faith. But you got to step out. Now listen to me. If you got a situation, a diagnosis, no money, you don't say a thousand times, I don't have it, I don't have it, and I don't have this. You know, the facts are the facts. But Jesus can circumvent facts and change your facts and make it into fiction. He can. He can do it. So we don't, we don't think, we don't think, some people, I'll just be honest, some people are into mysticism. It's okay to be real. It's okay to say, yuck. It's all right. But what it's not okay to say, this thing is permanent. That's not okay. Because that won't do good. Now, you got a calling on your life, a reason to be on the earth. You might as well fulfill it. Hello? You might as well do everything God's called you to do. You, you do have a calling on your I don't care who you are. We always think the preacher has a calling. No, everybody has a calling. Hallelujah. All of us have a calling on our life. And we might as well do it good. We might as well not be depressed, hurt, wounded, bitter, confused. We might as well fulfill the call of God on our life. Hallelujah. It's true. And I, I'm not talking about me. I'll just tell you the truth, you know. Like COVID was here three days after I was the pastor. And I was so excited about it because God now really had to be God. It wasn't, oh Lord, we trust that you hear us. Here's how I prayed, oh Jesus. Come on, say it with me, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Like, wake up God, uh, we need you now, hallelujah. You either be is or you be not, but God, you'll be God. Hallelujah. I just saw God show up, show up, show up, show up, show up, show up, and show off. I just saw him. But he had to hear some faith. He had to hear some faith. You could tell me how dumb your husband is, and I'll probably believe most of it. Okay, you just leave out one little item. You married him, but we'll talk some other time about that, all right? And you can, and there's probably a lot of truth in it, but I don't want you to chase me down every service and tell me how dumb he is. I want you to come in faith, God's gonna change him. Yeah. That's what I want. I wanna come in faith, God's gonna change him, and I'll whisper this, or kill him, one or the other. But we're gonna come together in faith. We're, I said we're gonna come together in faith. That's how we speak. We speak words of life and work. You just heard me say this. We're either going to win or either one will work. 
Hallelujah. But that's, that's the faith. God answers faith. He speaks to faith. Your kids are going to turn out. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to run the course of life, fall asleep. Hello? We're not going to die. And the Lord is so good. No, that's not how we're going to die. Look at me, everybody. God is so good. No! We're going to run the course of life. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to run the course of life. Pastor Shirley is a, it's kind of funny, she's an elder in the house. And she has publicly lied about her age. She clearly said she was 81 in the choir when she was 82. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of you don't know this, it's interesting. God called her here. This is her home. And her membership was removed at one time. And she didn't even sin. And she went to the membership class again after being a member for 30 years. But she knew God called her here. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Say it with me. Ha ha. You know, it was like everything came against, but she knew she was called here. And now she's a elder. Very fascinating, isn't it? By faith, I'm called here. By faith, hallelujah. And how many can say with me what a blessing she is? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm just going gonna, gonna, gonna to pour it on you right now. It doesn't matter what man says. It matters what God says. Huh? I said, it doesn't matter what man says. <laughs> I had an old guy. He was just mean. He was nasty and mean, all right? He came to me. He said, God will never use you. God will never use you. I just want to say this. Neener, neener. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Say it with me. You don't even, that's not a swear word, but neener, neener. Hallelujah. God is going to use me. Come on, somebody. Clap for yourself right now. God is going to use my life. God's going to use my circumstances. God is going to use me. Hallelujah. 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 God is going to use me. God is going to use my life. God is going to use my family. Look at Some of you don't like this. But God, you know where he really anoints? Your pain. You know what your pain does? It humbles you. And God always uses pain. Everybody wants to get away from pain. So we get a refill on the bottle beyond what we needed. It's true. It's true. And we got people emotionally overdosing on all these things to try to alleviate their pain. Pain tells you something's wrong, baby. Not a bad thing. It, it helps you diagnose. Hallelujah. And God will fix it. I don't know why we're having this little chat right here. Hallelujah. But all I know, all I know is God is good all the time. I do know that. God is good all the time. Now, I want to take one moment. Those of you, how many of you have lived way below your IQ sometimes? Let me see your hands right now. That, that means you, you, just, you had just been dumb. Is there any dum-dums here? Any... Is anybody a dum dum? Am I the only dum dum here? How many are dum dum? You've just been dumb. You know, I don't care. I'm going to do it. I, 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 oh, God, don't answer my prayer. How many have done that before? I, I'll just say right now, I am the senior pastor of dumb. But God has even shown me grace and mercy in my dumb. Holy Spirit told me years ago, go start a church, and nobody was coming to the church, and I'm working in Nordstrom's, and I could have been in a denomination, and they would have given me a parking spot, and they would have given me a secretary, and I'm working in Nordstrom's, and I'm in this dumb church that nobody comes to, and I just threw a tantrum. I came home to Pastor Jody and said, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back there. I'm not doing this. I don't need this. And she said, well, sweetheart, what do you want? We had, a, I'm telling you, we had about three to five people. And I said, I want 32 people tonight. Whatever that is. Just, I need somebody to help me right now. I need somebody. Come on, somebody help me right now. 
I need somebody to quit acting religious. Do with me. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that night, a busload came. 66 miles away. And there was exactly 32. And I yelled at my wife. I said, you called them. You called them. She said, we got three kids. I don't have time to call anybody. And I was a youth pastor 66 miles away. And a group of them got together and said, let's go be with pastor. And they came down in a bus. And I said to the leader, I said, how come you guys came? Well, God just spoke to all of us. We're supposed to come tonight. So I can't quit. Come on, everybody. You see, God will even anoint you in your tantrum. That's true. Come on. You haven't seen Pastor do that. Let's do it. Come on, everybody. Let's do it. Let's do this, dude. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Get the camera on me. I've thrown so many. I yelled at God another time. If you yelled at God and you're still alive, how many of you ever yelled at God? God, I'm giving everything. I'm the only one really committed to you. We're out of money. We're $3,200 behind, and I'm working at Nordstrom's, and, and nothing's working out. Do this with me. Wham, wham, wham. I need some people to help me write. Wham, wham. Do it in Spanish. Wham, wham, wham. Hungarian, do it. Wham, wham, wham. <laughs> do it in Chinese, somebody. Wham, wham, wham. And I, I just said to God, I said, I mean it this time. I know you brought the 32, but that was lucky. This is about six months later. We're out of money. And I tithe that I serve. I'm this close to being an angel. <laughs> With little horns and a tail. Fit throwing. I said, God, we need $3,200. Old Pentecostal lady came in the church. He ha, hallelujah. She said, the Holy Spirit woke me up last night and told me to come here. That you need a little encouragement. And God's going to mightily use you. She hands me a check. She says, how's this? And I look at it. It was $320. whoop de doo Then I looked again. It was $3,200. Well, I'll, whoopee hoo hoo. I looked at it again. It was $32,000. Here's what I said, yeah, come on, somebody, uh-huh, oh, he's a good God, he's a God that answers prayer, hallelujah, hallelujah, you see, you see, there's a call on your life, there's a call of God on your life, is there anybody here that's made a couple wrong turns? You know what? might take you a little longer to get there. You're still going to get there. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight, would you? Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Go ahead and be seated. Ushers, hand everybody an envelope. Ushers, if you would just give everybody an envelope. Online, e-transfer. You got to tithe. Listen to me. You got to tithe. Or... 3456 Fraser Street. Or you drive by the church and we have a probably the largest mailbox on all of Fraser. It says glad tidings. <laughs> I want to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. And I want you to hear this. He supplies seed to the sowers. Huh? He supplies what? Seed to the what? He gives seed to who? Sowers. God, I don't have any harvest. You don't have any seed in the ground. <laughs> the super always comes on top of the natural. It's true. He gives seed to the sower. And then it says he multiplies it. Put seed in the ground. Listen to me. Put seed in the ground. 
You put seed in the ground. There was a guy building a building. We had about 125 people. And the Holy Spirit, we had about $8,000 in the bank, and he was building a new church building across town. And the Lord said, just give him all your money. Say this with me. That can't be God. Say with me. That can't be God. And he was a few times a little mouthy with me and a little this and a little that. He's building a building. got properties building a building, and they're doing a big fundraiser. He said, give him all your money. I said, God, how do I really know this is you? And the Lord just whispered, because you don't want to do it. I said, well, why should I give it to him? Because I'm trying to bless you. Well, then bless me. Well, Fitz, just go to your trustees, get their okay, and go give the money to him. All right. Don't want to. I don't feel good about it. I don't really feel overly a lot of peace. I'll be honest with you right now. Just do it. The Lord said, the building you need is going to cost well over a million dollars. What's your little money going to do? And I said, I'm talking honest to God. I said, well, that money, we're closer to, to a million. You know, I did it. And I got a joy on it. And he just, oh, you're the greatest church. You're the greatest pastor. God bless you. We'll pray for you. Within nine months, a pastor said, I'm retiring, and I want to give you our $3.5 million building. Now, I want to say this to you. Yes, you do. Come on, well, well, come on everybody. Help me right now. Yeah. Yes, you do. It was on 11 acres. And there we had 404 people. We went into that building. We grew to 2,000. I'm going to just tell you, I got a lot of seed in the ground. I got seed in the ground. Hallelujah. You got seed in the ground? Hallelujah. Let's stand together tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got seed in the ground. Look at somebody say, you got seed in the ground? Come on, tell them that right now. You got some seed in the ground? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You give seed to the sower. Hallelujah. Hold it up with me. And Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that your people are blessed coming and going. I thank you that you're going to germinate it. I thank you no pestilent, nothing will touch it. I thank you for our family online around the world. Father, this is good soil, and I thank you. We got seed in the ground, and you're giving more seed to the sower in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, 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 amen. I believe that Sunday is going to be a historical day, so everybody knows that. And the only way that I will give you an excuse for missing is you're in the hospital in a coma. <laughs> I want everybody to bring someone. This Sunday will be like no other Sunday. It's going to be different. And the Lord has quickly quickened my spirit and told me that this young man the anointing is going to increase on his life, and this will be the first sermon he's preached. And God's promised me there'll be signs and wonders. This will be a momentous. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. But this will be a momentous time. There will be signs and wonders. How many believe there is the gift of miracles? It will happen. I want you to bring somebody. Bring the doubters, the scoffers, the backsliders. Even step out in faith. And bring your ex-husband. We're going to have church. Come on, everybody. We're going to have church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to do part two of promotion. I want to give you a few elements about the promotion that God is offering every believer. Say it out loud, promotion. No, that wasn't good enough. Say it, promotion. The Bible says that promotion cometh. Psalm 75, 6 and 7, it says this, promotion cometh. It comes. Promotion cometh. 
Now, it doesn't come from the north or the south or the east or the west. Get this doctrine in your head. God has saved a place, a warm seat for you that someone else is sitting in. And God's going to remove them and put you there. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. Business people, listen to me. There's something that God's cooked up for your life. And you didn't originate it, but God has matured it. Listen to me. And he's going to cause you to walk into it. What you didn't do, that God does. It's, it's true. It's true. So promotion, what? It comes. But it doesn't come from the north, the south, or east, or the west. It says this, that the Lord takes one, puts him down, and takes another one, puts him up. It comes from the Lord. Say it out loud, promotion. No, say it. How many want promotion for your children? My children have got unusual promotions. Unusual promotions. All of them. It was beyond their genetics. It was beyond their IQ or their ability. It was just God. God gave promotions. And we were their father and mother, and we had a spirit, we believe, for promotion on their lives. My eldest son was only married for about 30 days. I believe he was 22 years old and married a beautiful woman. And I get a phone call from a friend of mine who said, I'm looking for a youth pastor. He's too young for this. It was a church, maybe 10,000 people. And I sent my son there. And he goes into this church, it was called World Harvest in Columbus, Ohio. The pastor, one of the great preachers of America, his name's Rod Parsley. And my son goes in, there was about 60 church brats in the youth group. 60 of them. Brats. Hated God, hated, hated their parents, hated everything. Uh, I'll just say it the way it is, you know, all the white guys wanted to be black. And just everybody had an attitude, and my son just wonderfully said, you know, if you don't want to be here, that's okay. I won't tell your parents. But if you're going to be in my youth group, you're going to fall in love with God, do what I say. So all of you brats, you just go with your baggy pants. I need someone to yell at me right now. You could hear my son. I, and I need you just to go down the hall and wander around in the church. And I won't tell on you because I don't want you in here. I want only those who want God, uh, only those who will support our pastor, only those who will do whatever thing God says, only those who want to get right with God, only those who will throw their dugs away, only those who will quit pimping around. I only want you. He masterfully took that group down to about 15. It was phenomenal. Just like I did here. And it grew, and it grew, and I'm told that he had within a year and a half a thousand young people a thousand a thousand young people that's what i was told had a thousand and they'd all sit in the front row of the church and pastor parsley would come in and they'd hold their bibles up and they yell this preach it white boy come on every color would yell preach it preach it preach it they went from a dismal group to a phenomenal group and they began to understand that there was promotion. They began to understand the young people, if you'll serve, listen, if you'll serve someone else's dreams, God will give you your dreams. If you only have a dream, your dream will never be fulfilled until you make someone else's success. Can I just preach for a moment? Hallelujah. You see, when you serve the dreams of this house, when you serve the anointing of this house, the God will promote you and give you a dream for your house. I'm mean, just, I, I won't preach real long tonight, but someone just fanned me and said, it's pretty good. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Just someone, just, okay, don't fan me then. Fan yourself and said, I, I think tonight's going to be a night where unbelief and doubt is going to come off me. I think tonight's going to be a little, little different. Lean over to your wife and say, make sure those teeth have polygrip tonight. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. You'll be on call. Let me bring a few things here. It says this, Amos chapter 7 and verse 14. 
I was no prophet or a son of a prophet. Here's Amos saying, I'm nobody. I was neither a prophet or a son of a prophet. You know, I, I, I took care of a few trees. And, and I had a few sheep. There was nothing going on in my life but God. Someone say God. God put a promotion on my life. And he brought me to this place to prophesy. A nobody, a nothing. I believe there's a whole bunch of nobodies who are caring for a few sycamore trees, hallelujah, and a few sheep that God has a promotion for your life. I believe it. 1 Corinthians 1, 27. God has chosen the foolish things of this world to profound the wise. God takes nobodies. I had no father. I had, I had no morals. I, I had nothing going for I blew my 17th birthday candles out with my nose. Someone said, God can use anybody. I said, God can use anybody. And God takes a little girl that's in this church seeking God who nobody even notices and sends them to the Arctic with somebody shout in this place. Hallelujah. God Almighty takes nobodies and put promotion on their life. He'll put promotion on your life. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have a great family. God promotes nobodies. Nobodies. It says this, Acts 4.13. These dudes were ordinary. They're just ordinary. They're fishermen. The native tongue of fishermen, I was a commercial fisherman in Alaska. The native tongue of fishermen is swearing. That's how you talk. All we did is swear but me. All of them. And they could, they could run a line of swear words and they knew what each other was saying. These guys were absolute the low caliber of the planet. And a few other guys were with them and they were tax gatherers. Used car salesmen that promised the car would run forever. That's who they were. They were their liars and cussers. And the trained religious society was astounded by them. They were ordinary. But they realized they had been with Jesus. I want someone divorced to be with Jesus. I want someone who is on drugs to be with Jesus. Someone who's been immoral, I want you to be with Jesus. Someone who's failed at business, come on somebody, help me, I want you to be with Jesus. That God takes ordinary people and he promotes them. Not those that have it all together, but ordinary. Ordinary people. First Samuel 17, 36. Look what it says, your servant. The king called him and he said, your servant. If you're going to go from ordinary to extraordinary and God's going to promote you, you're going to have to humble yourself and serve in a place you don't necessarily want to serve. So a lot of you think you get to go where you want to go and you get to do what you want to do. God will often take you to places that you don't necessarily want to go. And it's not what you really feel led to do, but it's the place where God wants you to be a servant so he can promote you. I need somebody to yell at me right now or at least say, ouch, do something in this place. Do something. Quit looking for stardom and everyone to recognize who you are. I'm telling you that your promotion comes from the Lord, not from man. Quit looking to the north and south and east and west. I, I'm going to just cut loose right now. Can I just cut loose? I, I, I'm just going to tell you that. I see people seeing the, the beauty of this place and it's coming alive. And all of a sudden they want to come here and they have a great ministry. I'll tell you where your great ministry starts. The toilet cleaning. Cleaning toilets. Say it with me, rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Come on, somebody. It comes when you're a nobody, and God always takes nobodies and makes them somebody. Well, you think you're all that. You're on television, and you, you preach all the time, and you've been all over the earth. No, 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 no. No, I clean the church at midnight till four in the morning for two years, and I did it 
poorly because I wasn't gifted at it, but I did it anyway. And two of the deacons said, fire them. And the pastor said, we don't pay them. And I tried and tried and tried, but at least I had the, the guts to take the gum from the deacons that they put underneath the pew and wipe it off. And no one paid me to clean the garbage off, off, off the parking lot. No one saw me those two years. Uh, no one saw me in a place called Cedar Woolley for four years, a little town where nobody could read or write, and the Bible was a picture Bible. No one saw me in a place I didn't fit in. I did not fit in. In four years, yes, sir. What else, sir? What can I do, sir? That's six years. And nobody saw me that I loved to play more than I loved to study. No one saw me seven years in school. No one saw those years. No one saw me in a gymnasium for four years when nobody came to the church. They only see this. I'm going to let you know God knows how to promote people. Cleaning gum under pews, uh, working in Cedra Woolley and serving with all my heart. God saw it. And some of you, God's giving you a promotion, but you got to get your attitude right now. We'll try that again now because see to God one day is a thousand years somebody hear this and it will turn into a thousand years if you don't get your spirit right hallelujah some of you are smarter than you're more gifted than and they're above you and they get the attention that you don't. God knows where you're at, and he's going to promote you as to how you respond to what you don't like. Oh, and now it's all quiet. Now I'm telling you, God's going to bless you. And everybody, oh. I'm going to tell you right now, God's going to forget about you for another 10 years if you don't listen to this preacher. He'll just forget about you. He'll put you on the backside of nowhere with no address, with not enough water, I don't hear anybody amen to me right now. I, I don't hear anybody right now. How many want to uh, smarten up real quick? How many love your life? Come on, somebody. How, they, how many love right where you're at? You know, everybody, oh, Pastor Shot, he's the pastor. He can tell everybody what to do. He's just great. And I walk in this place that's just incredible. I say, oh, God, I hope they have an opening for a custodian. Man, to, I can just see it right now. You know, I, I, I just love to be in here vacuuming. I would. I wouldn't have to think about too much. I wouldn't be responsible. Uh, if someone came, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, the pastor's over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just like it. I, I like just have a vacuum. Uh-huh. Uh yeah. I, I would. Hallelujah. Oh, God is. He's God. And he's big. Hallelujah. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it. I love it. I just. I. I. I I just love, I, I'm going to get real, real. I have people come to me, Pastor, I did this and this and this. I'm going, oh, God, kill yourself. <laughs> come on, everybody. It is over unless Jesus comes. I need somebody to wake up and don't pretend with me right now. Oh, God, your life is over if God doesn't show up. Hallelujah. Jody Ann said, Hun, I think we should fast another week. She's just, just. Just you and I, just let's just take another week and fast. And I said to myself, you're the executive pastor. That's your job. <laughs> how, co how come this and how come that and how come these and how come that? Someone say, praise the Lord, I'm being promoted. Come on, somebody say, thank God I'm being promoted. The pressure is what brings the promotion. It says in 1 Samuel 17, 36, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel in a good mood right now. I do not want faithless hands laying hands on me. I don't want chubby little clergy that can't handle any problems and they're worried about someone leaving their church and the one family that were really committed, left. And Jesus is over. 
the kingdom is done. They are so valuable, everything God says can't happen. Huh? Huh? I need a preacher that just walks with a little bit of like, I don't need you. You you better pray to God that I pray for you. I'm dead serious. How many know I'm dead serious? Only family in our church that really gave. One family. The most committed, the most humble, never threatened or said this. They gave 50% of everything from their heart. Pastor, what can we do? How can we change? Is there anything you want to correct in us? And they came to me and said, my dad was a great pastor and he had a stroke and he lives in California, but we're not going. We're committed here. And the Lord said, send them. I said, no. No, if that's, if it's you, change your, change your mind. <laughs> change your mind, God. Just, 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 there's scripture where you changed your mind before. And the Lord said, send them, son. Their dad was faithful to me and they, and they need them. He said, I need them. These other suckers don't even give. And they're like fully committed. And they said to me, here's what they said, God, and you heard it. <laughs> they said that they're called here to be with me. So if that's the truth, then let it be. The Lord says, send them. And the Lord said to me, I have so much more I want to do for you. I want to promote you, but I can't until you fully obey me and trust me. So I went to these beautiful people. They were phenomenal. I said, you know, it's in my heart. You guys need to go move to stupid California where there will be earthquakes. And, and you need to go serve your dad because he deserves it. And it's the right thing, and I bless you. They started crying. So did I. And, and, and they said, we knew you were a man of God. We knew you cared about us. Not that much. And we know we're supposed to go there, but we wouldn't go there without your blessing. I take it back. <laughs> come, on, come on, everybody. It's like, oh, what? What's going on? And the Lord said, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to promote you. The next month, about 150 new people came committed on fire, shouters, praisers, and they even yell, preach it, white boy. Come on, somebody. God turned it around. Then I get a phone call for a multi-million dollar building, and this, it would have never, someone say, promotion comes from the Lord. Somebody hear this word tonight, promotion comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from that person or this person. It doesn't come from your family. It doesn't come through your connections. It doesn't come through your charm. It comes from the Lord. How many want to say, God, I want the promotion that comes from you? Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. I'm going to ask you tonight, is there a few things that growl at you and yell at you that maybe you need to kill? Let me see your hands tonight. A few things that dominate you and cause you to be afraid. I want those that are 50 and older, okay? Look it. Look it. God didn't even speak to Moses till he was 80. Your life isn't over because you're 50 or 60 or 70. God can pay you back. I'm saying God can pay you back. God can do whatever he can do as long as you say you're servant. And you're going to have to kill some fear. You're going to have to kill some unbelief. Some of the terror in your life, you're going to have to kill it. Say, no. Fear you do not. Well, you know, your parents lost everything when they were your, your age. You know. Your dad had a heart attack. He was perfectly healthy. And at your exact age, 59, he dropped dead. You know that, don't you? You've got to kill that thing. You've got to kill that thing. Pastor Lizelle retired from here when he was 65. I started when I was 64. <laughs> it's funny to me. I believe in God just put his hand on me and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be really, really, really old. 89. 
I really, I mean, the oldest of all. And I believe that, that I'll be walking the wrong way. No, Pastor, you're preaching. Is this well? Okay, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. My best days are ahead of me. Hallelujah. My greatest prophetic moments are ahead of me. But you got to kill both. I said, you got to kill both. Whatever's yelling at you, whatever's growling at you, kill it. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Then it says, because I'm connected to the living God. I'm connected to the living God. Say it with me, living God. Can I preach for a few more moments? Does anybody, we, we're having the blood bank truck right after service here. You know, this word is where I live. This word is not a sermon. This is a word. Because promotion cometh. Everybody, everybody at the sound of my voice, that there is a promotion that's beyond your pay grade, beyond who you are and what you can do. There is a promotion. And God has decided to promote glad tidings. And if you're in this house, there is some kind of promotion in your life. It doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be fame. It has some of you, you can overcome things that have just crippled you forever. And you just won't be crippled anymore. <laughs> Few of you, nobody likes you. And people are going to start saying, oh, that's a wonderful person. Someone just put their hands forward and say, oh, let that be, Lord. Let that be. And then those that you know nobody likes, point your hand at them and just say, Lord, let it come on them. <laughs> it, it says, and I absolutely love, how many love the word? We'll try it again. How many love the word? 1 Samuel 16 and verse 13, and he said he, he anointed, listen to it, he anointed him in the presence of his brothers who had sentenced him to be the dopey little brother. He was stereotyped. He's the one always sick. He's the one always depressed. He's the one always out of money. And God anointed him in the presence of everybody else. And God's going to anoint you in the presence of all the naysayers, all the doubters, all those that are against you. He anointed him in the presence of his brothers. That day, someone say that day. There will be in this house an unusual mighty anointing that will come on your life for different events. There will be a special anointing for your life for the things that you can't do. It says in verse 13, it took the oil and it anointed him. Verse 17, this is important. You've got you to hear this. Find someone who plays the instrument well. You're going to have to become better at what you do. You're going to have to work whatever you do. You have to work it. Whatever you're doing in life right now, do everything you can to become better. Because a guy that had a guitar that had two strings wasn't called for this moment. You got to become better. How many have some areas in your life you could improve? See, you're going to get called on, but if you don't have any skill set, God can't use you. I, uh, I dribbled a basketball in Seattle in the rain with my opposite hands five miles a day. In the rain. Because that's all it does there. I would shoot a thousand foul shots a day. I, when it's wet, your hands begin to be soft. 
and I'd wear the ends of my fingers out and they would bleed. And I would wrap my fingers so I could keep dribbling in the dark and shooting. I'm left-handed. I'm in my right mind. And I would dribble with my opposite hand. And I really very rarely missed a foul shot. Then some of my team members decided to get drunk. And they got kicked off the team. I'm a brand new Christian. I didn't get drunk. And now all we had was me and a bunch of sophomores. And the coach said, we're not going to win many games this year. So Vince, I'm not going to play you anymore. I'm going to play sophomore so we can prepare for the future. And the Lord said to me, keep dribbling and keep shooting. I said, what's the use? Keep dribbling and keep shooting. Uh, but God, I'm God, you're not. Do what I tell you to do. And the Lord showed me that even though what I prepared for wasn't used, God put a tenacity in me for other things. And even though what you're doing isn't working out, because you're obedient where you're at, God will use it in another field. It's, 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 it's true. Whatever you're doing, and Pentecostals don't like to hear this. Well, we're trusting the Lord. No, the Lord's trusting you. I don't want an accountant that can't count. Find someone. Wave your hand. Find someone who's got a good spirit who can serve in someone else's court, who doesn't have an agenda, and promotion will come in your life. There will be a promotion that's beyond you. Verse 18, plays well. He's a brave warrior. He speaks well. Look what it says. And he's groomed. I'm going to be really careful with this. But do your best to be better at what you do. If you got the low end job of answering the phone, hello! Can you wait a minute? I'll flush the toilet. Let's do this together. Hello, how can I serve you? Hello, how can I serve you? Thank you for calling. Jody Ann, we were dating and she called me. She had just had a little time. She ran a daycare at uh, 18 years old. She ran the whole daycare. And she called me and I said, I'm sorry, the number you've dialed is not a working number at this time. She hung up. She called again. I'm sorry, the number you have called is not a working number at this time. She called again. I said, I'm sorry, Jody Ann. We laughed about that. Played well. Groom yourself. Do, do you know that I look on television every service? Do you know I know if there's fingerprints on the pulpit? Do you know that? Do you know I look at every camera angle? Huh? What, what are you talking I'm going to be the best I can be. You know, I'm not going to have glad tidings be seen around the world. We're going to be the best. Wait till you see our new bathroom. No, wait till you see our new bathroom. It's a girl's bathroom because you always start with girls. Ask me how good it is. The men's isn't completed, and men will say, can we use the girls? 
It is beyond every angle, every single thing about it. It, I, I'm just going to tell you, there's going to be a new river in this house. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's just, it's, it'll make you want to go to the bathroom. It's just so good. Even if you don't have to go, you'll go in there just look in the mirror and kind of stare around. Excellence. Someone say excellence. Brave. Warrior. Speaks well. Groomed. And then it says this, verse 18, the Lord is with him. The Lord, whatever you're doing, do it better. Whatever you're doing, evaluate yourself. Verse 19. Say this word with me, resume. Do you know what his resume was at this point? He's with the sheep. That was his resume. That's it. He's with the sheep. But you have to understand this culture, it means more than that. His father told him where to go and what to do, and he did it. I'll try that again. His father told him what to do, where to go, and he did it. And if you can understand, I'll close with this. I will close. If he wasn't exactly where his father told him to be, the land was so massive. They never would have found him, and he never would have been the king. He was in the exact place where they could come and get him for his promotion. Stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. 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 I want to sing, Here I Am to Worship. Here I am, God. I believe, I believe there's a place. I believe there's a preparation. And I don't care how old you are. Just say to God, I'll be where you want me to be. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll change what you want me to change. I just want to be used by you. I stand in awe that I'm here. All of you know by now I'm not the best preacher. I'm not the best leader. But I've been where God wants me to be. I've done what God's want me to do. And he's used my life for his glory. I'm really ordinary. I really, really am. I'm really ordinary. I know I am. But he's extraordinary. for the family around the earth. Father, they're watching from Uganda, Liberia, from Taiwan, Dubai, India. Father, I thank you. You know where they're at. And I declare promotion on your life. The promotion that only can come from God. The dreams that are in your heart, do what's right where you're at. And God knows where you're at, and he knows your address. I pray for the congregation right now, Father. All the people, lift your hands with me just for a moment. Father, I, I thank you for promotion on your beautiful people. I thank you that you will take ordinary and do extraordinary and will be seen as those who have been with Jesus. I pray we live 
beyond what we could have done and we'll live in a realm of what you've done through us. We take every area of our life and God help me be better, help me improve and use what I have. I put it in your hand for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, amen, hallelujah. I'll declare this. We'll close with this song, but I'll declare this. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God.